Hyundai doesn't just want to be Toyota, it wants to break Toyota. In part by relentlessly copying the big T's jujitsu. Toyota created the mass market hybrid, and it's pretty much had the corner on it, as others chipped futilely at Fortress Prius with unworthy competitors, including their failed Honda Insight, or shied away from hybrids altogether. Yet, even as soft fuel prices have partially deflated the eco car business over the past year, Hyundai sees opportunity, both in newfangled ride sharing fleets where the break even point on a hybrid is easily reached, and in up and coming millennials. They will represent 40% of new car buyers by 2020. And as long as these young guns stay the course with their values as they age, just like the baby boomers, cough, including a preference for urban living in smaller electrified vehicles, a parade of bearded and plaid wearing buyers could march right into Hyundai's open arms. The Ionic and its sister, the Kia Niro crossover, are just volleys one and two in the seven vehicle broadside over the next year intended to bust the Prius's lock on the average person's mental image of a hybrid. Hyundai's plan is to fight hard on pricing. The base $23,035 Ionic Blue comes in $2,535 under the base Prius 2, though you'll have to compare the respective features lists closely to see which car has the stuff that matters to you. Would you rather have heated mirrors, Prius, or dual-zone climate control, Ionic? As you go up the Ionic's trim levels, from blue to sell to limited, the Hyundai's price advantage narrows but remains. Hyundai plans to employ the same basic component set to yield not only the hybrid Ionic, which in its most stripped-down blue trim lays claim to a 58 mile per gallon EPA average, but a plug-in hybrid and a full LEV as well. It is also Hyundai's first platform design with autonomy in mind, the car said to be ready to add all seeing, all-knowing hardware to its portfolio of optional driver's aids when the tech becomes available. There is opportunity here. If Toyota can be faulted for something besides refusing to make anything more than modest improvements to the Prius's handling, it's for not expanding the Prius sub-brand into body styles such as crossovers, which are the preferred choice of today's buyers. Not everyone willing to pay extra for electrification wants a potato, and Hyundai doesn't plan on making that same mistake. However, first we get a Hyundai potato that looks a lot like a Toyota potato, and indeed like the Idaho russet that was the Honda in sight. And that's not really anyone's fault. If Mother Nature had simply taken a few classes at Art Center, we'd all be driving around in Ferrari 330p4s. But her wind tunnel rewards a somewhat zafting form with small wheels and a tall, billboard butt. Toyota wrestled with this conundrum on the current Prius by assigning the front and rear styling to wavy gravy. But Hyundai has decided to be practical and adorn the Ionic with a more conventional suite of corporate brand motifs that meld into a pleasing expression of cultured grace. If the Ionic looks like an Elantra with a hatchback, that's because it more or less is. The Ionix 106.3-inch wheelbase is identical to the Elantra's, and its strut front and multi-link rear suspensions, while having more aluminum, owe much to Hyundai's popular compact. Any driver of the current Elantra won't even need to spend much time with the Ionix owner's manual, as the control placement, the classy piano key buttons, the technically grained plastics that effectively disguise the cheap bits, and the functions of the central touchscreen are so familiar. Both cars have great, uberific rear seat room. Perhaps the best reason to choose the Ionic over an Elantra is the healthy cargo capacity. Spreading the rear dampers far apart helped create a cavernous barn in back, especially once the rear seats are folded. And the hatch hole is wide and accommodating for large items. The Ionic's other main engineering accomplishments include a relentless thrifting of the internal combustion engine and incorporating a 12-volt lithium-ion battery into the same pack as the hybrid's 240-volt, 1.6-kWh lithium-ion battery. Until now, non-plug-in hybrids have typically followed a more conventional route with cheaper, less power-dense, but less tempestuous, nickel-metal hydride batteries and separate lead-acid 12-volt batteries. In the Ionic, both the 12 and 240-volt batteries get crammed into a single box compact enough to fit under the rear bench with only a small ventilation grill to give it away, 
Hyundai also offers the industry's first lifetime battery warranty, removing one fear that causes potential buyers to reject electrified cars.